Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. Today, we're gonna talk all about body mist backups. And I know it's random, but before we start, can I just show you my necklace? I just think it's so fun and funky. But today I'm gonna to be talking all about body mists that are so good, they are backup worthy. First, I'm gonna tell you the ones that I've already had backups of, used them up, and I only have that one left. Then I'm gonna show you all the body mists that I currently have backups of. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you a few that I've recently been loving and really am now wanting backups of. And there is quite a bit here, so grab some snacks and a drink and let's just hop right into it. First, let's start with Iced Lemon Pound Cake. This one you may have seen in my recent top 12 fragrance dents in my fragrance mist collection. This one is definitely a super sweet gourmand that I have just been loving. I did go through a whole bottle of this and this is kind of my backup and I'm trying to savor it. There are talks of this one coming back for Mother's Day, so I will definitely be on the hunt for this one, as well as that daffodil one. Oh my goodness, I just want that in the full size. But this one is so good, and the fragrance notes are sugary glazed icing, pure lemon zest, and fluffy pound cake. This next one is one that I've been through multiple bottles of. This one is the Pumpkin Pecan Waffles. I always try to keep one of these in my reserve. I absolutely love this fragrance. It is a warm, comfy, cozy type of scent, and it's just one of my faves from them. So as many bottles as I've been through, I always make sure to keep one with me all year round. This is one of the fragrances that does come back almost every fall, I think every fall. But yeah, definitely a fave. This one has fragrance notes of maple syrup, golden waffles, pumpkin spice, and brown sugar. Super yummy, another great gourmand. This next one is the ultimate mango scent. It's super fruity, super juicy. This one is the Golden Lagoon Mango. I do really love the tropical looking packaging on this one. And this one has fragrance notes of sunny mango, saltwater woods, and coral blooms. To me, this one is just a super bright, poppy, fresh, juicy, fruity one. I did go through a whole bottle of this and I'm currently working on a body cream in the matching fragrance, so it's definitely one that I really enjoy. This one is one that I've been looking for like for years. And what I mean by that is I had some dread wax that actually smelled exactly like this and I've been on a hunt for like 10 years to find a fragrance that smells like that wax. It is like the juiciest mango scent and this is like a perfect dupe of that fragrance. I am in love with it and I'm so glad to have it in another form. This next one's kind of interesting. This is one that I used to really love and I'm not sure if it's just this rendition of it that I'm just not loving anymore or if it's just a fragrance I don't vibe with as much anymore. This one is Sweater Weather. Just like Pumpkin Pecan Waffles, this is one that I thought I just wanted a backup of in my collection at all times. It's warm, it's cozy, it's just homely, you know? I just, I don't know, I like this one, but... I just haven't worn it in a while. It's not one that I've been reaching for though. So that's kind of my indicator that maybe I don't like it as much. Maybe it's just one that I haven't pulled for, but the fragrance notes are sun crisp apple, autumn leaves, and orchard woods. So it definitely does have that kind of fruity note in the opening, but that coziness comes in with the woods and leaves, and it's definitely a nice fragrance. I guess I will have to pull this one back out and try to give it another chance, but this one is one that has been kind of on the back burner. Another one I have used multiple bottles of though. This next one is actually one I let myself run out of. This one I was out of for a few months. This one is the Fairy Tale. I wasn't sure if they were going to be bringing it back. It went from being readily available to an online exclusive to I don't know what. And then it came back in the most recent winter collection. So I'm glad to have this one again because I really do love this one. It's very entrancing and mysterious. The fragrance notes are pomegranate nectar, fresh orange blossom, vanilla bean, and warm amber. Now, I feel like those bottom notes definitely round out those juicier, sweeter notes for this one. 
I definitely don't get a lot of fruity scent. It's definitely got a sweetness to it, but the way those bottom notes, that amber and the vanilla, almost give it like a woody sensation in the end there. And I guess it has a little bit of sweetness from the fruits, but fruit is not the first thing I smell when I smell this fragrance. It just smells like a really luxurious perfume type of fragrance or something like that. Next up is one that they recently phased out. This is the Dream Bright. This has been my girl. I have loved this fragrance for the past year and a half. And guess what? I didn't get enough backups. Now it's gone. They got rid of all of it at semi-annual sale. And this is my last one, which is really unfortunate because honestly, this is a gorgeous fragrance. It is supposed to be like a wintry fragrance, but honestly, I feel like it works all year round. And this is another one that comes into like that perfume house vibe. It is just so well blended. The fragrance notes on this one are sapphire berries, night blooming orchid, and crystallized vanilla. You definitely get berry and vanilla and that orchid just rounds it all out. It is just so nice. Now we're gonna talk about the Waves collection. Yes, a whole collection. This is one of the first collections that I needed every piece from. It just was so good. First, we have Amethyst Waves. This one almost smells coconutty to me. This one has fragrance notes of dream berries, wild blooms, and soft sandalwood. So it's definitely not a coconut fragrance. But it gives like that warm summery air type of vibe to me. I don't know. I really enjoyed this one and went through it pretty quickly. I did go ahead and grab a backup of it and it's definitely a really pretty one. It's kind of airy. It's not overtaking. So if you are not a fan of really strong fragrances, this one is one of those lighter, fresh type of scents and it's got that tropical air to it. I don't know. I don't know why exactly. With berries, blooms, and sandalwood, you would think of this as like a woody scent with some berry accent, but I really don't get that at all. It's all tropical to me. This next one from that same collection is the Saltwater Breeze. Oh my goodness. When I think of like a crisp, fresh, girly fragrance, this is it. It is so nice. It's like aquatic, but floral. It's really bright and crisp and gives that really like happy feel to it. I don't know, it's so lovely. The fragrance notes are fresh linen, violet leaves, water blossom, and white musk. I accentuate the linen because I really am not a linen fan when it comes to fragrances. I like my linens to smell like linen, not necessarily me. So this one was really interesting, the way that it rounded out. I definitely do get that like fresh, crisp, clean vibe that the laundry-ish like linen scent could give. But the way it rounds out with the floral, it just becomes so playful and bright. I don't know. I really love this one. And another one that I kind of wish I had another backup of because I went through this one real quick. Now we're going to be jumping into the ones that I currently have backups of. And with that, we're going to end off the Waves collection. This one is the Emerald Mist from that same collection. It was a trio, and I felt like they really did that trio justice. I felt like they took three different set profiles and made a perfect trio, and I liked them all, which is kind of interesting. It really rarely happens. So this one is a really nice mix. This one has fragrance notes of Fresh Rainfall, Sunkissed Pear, and Blonde Woods. Ooh wee. This one is one you definitely get the pear note. A lot of pear blended fragrances, I don't really smell pear, which is okay because I don't necessarily love that fragrance for me. But the way this blends with the woodiness, oh my goodness. This has like a fruity yet crisp and yummy fresh kind of scent. I love the way the wood rounds it out and it just gives it a softness, a suppleness. I can't describe this one well enough, and this is one that I try not to use because I don't want to run out of it. It's one of those kinds of fragrances. So this is almost like a special occasion fragrance for me. It's just that good. Another one that gives really luxury perfume house vibes. Oh my goodness. So supple, sweet, soft, and lovely. And again, I do have two of these, so I don't have to be ultra sparing with it. 
but it's so good. I can't imagine running out of this one. Next up is Chasing Fireflies. This one I do have a mini backup of. Oof, ran out of breath there, but these ones, this is actually my backups to ones that I've had in the past. I have been through one or two bottles of this one. It is another one that gives me super luxury perfume vibes. This one makes me smell like incense. Now, that is not a bad thing. This smells so good. Oh my God. Some people say it smells like bug spray and I'm just like shook by that explanation. It does not smell like bug spray. It smells like heaven. And this is another one I don't want to run out of. I may have to grab one more of. I don't know when they're going to get rid of this one. It's been around for a while and that makes me kind of scared because just like Dream Bright, once they have it around for a while, they just kind of get rid of it and get something new in its place. So yeah, definitely a really lovely one that I fell in love with last summer, but I'm still really, really enjoying. Fragrance notes on this one is Golden Pear, Jasmine Blooms, and Illuminated Woods. Now this is another one that you kind of smell that pear scent, but to me, this is totally incensed pear. And that's kind of a weird explanation because no fragrances really have that, but this is it and I am in love with it and I just can't get enough of it, honestly. This next one is another one that I've had backups of. I do have a little mini backup of, but I've gone through this fragrance. I think that this one I've only gone through a mini of, but I've really been enjoying the body care on this one as well. This is a fresh fragrance. It smells like a really fresh florally fruit. Now, I'm not sure what fruit is in there, but you get like a little bit of juicy sweetness from it. And the florals kind of seem to just round whatever that is out. And I'm not sure what it is. So let's peek at the fragrance notes. This one, I just, I'm, I'm really liking this one as a clean, fresh fragrance but I don't think it's really meant to be like a super fresh, clean fragrance. You know what I mean? This one is fragrance notes of blue freesia, white peach, fresh clementine, violet, and clean musk. Okay, there were two fruits in there and I didn't really expect it. That clean musk definitely rounds it out and gives it that crispness. I love this one. I really love this one. It's super girly, preppy, like, I don't know. I just, I just love it. Definitely one that I was really loving last summer. I think the freshness of it really livens up my summer when here it is just so hot and humid. So this one is really refreshing. Love this one. Another really refreshing one in my collection that I do have a backup of is Sunblooms and Suede. This one is another clean, juicy, like fruity type of scent, but this one is more on the fruity. No floral for this one. Just so, so sweet, like ridiculously sweet. If you're looking for something overtly sweet and almost juvenile, this is it. I mean, it's just playful and summery and fun. It's bright, it's poppy, and it's super sweet. Like, all I smell is sweet. And this one has fragrance notes of white raspberries. So not that deep raspberry-ish smell that you would expect from raspberry. Okay, so a white raspberry, very light, fruity, crisp but not like that over-synthesized raspberry smell, if you know what I mean. And then it's got pink petals and vanilla cream. So I guess it does have floral, not enough to really smell it or round it into be a florally smell. Let's give this another smell test. It's light and airy, but it's also got like a really deep sweetness to it. It's got like that berry note has like a tartness to it. Hard to describe. My mouth is watering though because it is very juicy and craveable on the fruitier sweet side. Really an interesting one. This next one gives a totally different vibe. This one is Wild Sand. This one came from last year's summer duo and oh my lord, I love this one so much. It smells warm and summery. Sand in the name is perfect because if I had to describe it, Sandy would be in the definition. It gives like a warm sandy beach vibe without the tropical, if you know what I'm saying. Like there's like a woodiness to this one. The fragrance notes are prickly pear fruit, cactus flower, and warm agave nectar. I remember having to describe this one recently and not agreeing with any of those notes. Let's have a smell test. 
to me, that's just like warm, summer, airy, deep, almost woody. I really smell a woody fragrance in there. And I just, I don't know. Oh, it's so good. I don't know why they're using these notes. Like prickly pear fruit and cactus flower. I feel like there's a floralness there, but I feel like woody is definitely on the high aspect of the note range. I feel like prickly pear fruit and cactus flower are like this much of the fragrance, whereas this smells almost like a sandalwood, an aloe wood, a rosewood, something woody but sweet and I don't know, it's just so warm. So I guess I feel and smell those sweet desert blooms but this is such a warmer fragrance than just some floral. Like, floral is on the bottom. Floral is so minute in this smell. This is just pure warm. Warm agave nectar, I can see that in there, but I would say that this is a sun-drenched wood and agave nectar with like a hint of desert floral. So I've said this once before, this is a hard to describe, but easy to love type of fragrance. Definitely got more of a complex feeling to it. Really enjoy this one. This next one is another one I don't really love as much as I used to, which is kind of interesting. This is a really complex scent as well. This one is Into the Night. This one is one of their mainstay fragrances. You can get it all the time. And I can tell why it is very complex. It's really good. It's kind of on the perfumey side, but it's sweet and craveable and not in a gourmand way really interesting. This one has fragrance notes of raspberry noir, amber crystals, velvety rose petals, creamy patchouli, and mocha musk. So you can kind of see just with how many fragrance notes are in there, how this one can kind of be complex. It's good, but it's not one that I reach for anymore. I've just smelled it so many times. Mm, it's good. It's really good. Just not what I'm pulling for right now. And it is really good. It's kind of luxurious and it's deep and it's fruity, but not in like that fruity poppy way. It's more of like on the dark fruit side where it's like mysterious and sultry. I don't know, it's, it's good, but I've got to let somebody else have a try at this baby. Another deep fruit fragrance that I enjoy so much. This one is one of my go-to fragrances. This one is Dark Kiss. I have it in three different packagings here and oh my goodness, I just love it so much. This is another one that's on the sultry dark fruit side. Really complex, but really good. This one has fragrance notes of black raspberry, burgundy rose, bergamot incense, dark vanilla bean, and plum musk so interesting and complex. I just really enjoy this one and even though it is kind of been around for a while and it does stay around, it's one that I definitely don't want to run out of. I've been using this one for years and it's definitely a go-to. And not only that, it's a go-to that I haven't gotten sick of. Some fragrances almost feel dated after a while. This one has stayed so good for so long. Next up, I have Cloud Nine. This one is another interesting one, but I haven't smelled this one in a while. Another one I don't pull for very often. Oh my goodness, I don't know why. That smells so good. Oh my goodness. It's got fruity, but it's got floral and it's kind of sophisticated and not in like a mature way. Just kind of like a, I'm on my grown woman. You know what I mean? I don't know. It smells so good. This one has fragrance notes of lavender breeze, morning dew drops, and cozy amber. And randomly enough, this one kind of smells like if these two had a baby with something else going on. Like, I don't know why, but it kind of reminds me of these two layered. The lavender breeze and morning dew drops, I guess, are giving this a fresh, almost fruity scent, which is really weird. This has no fruity notes in there, but it's really bright and almost juicy as if it did. So kind of interesting. And the cozy amber is definitely on the very bottom. It's not a deep amber scent at all. This one I feel like is a bright and fun one, but it's also kind of a calming and soothing one. So weird, so interesting. And it's definitely one that I should be pulling for more. Next up, we have Midnight Spell, which at the time I didn't even realize, but these have two different colored tops. How random. 
This one is so good. This one is kind of in the unisex area of scents. This one has woody notes, but it's also got like a hint of femininity to it. I don't know. I love it. This one has fragrance notes of mystic air, moonlit woods, and crystal amber. It's that amber note. This one has that deep amber to it. Ooh, it's so yummy. It's like a woody, airy, ambery festival. I just love it so much. It's very warming, soothing, cozy type of fragrance. It did come out around Halloween last year, but this has definitely been an all year round kind of fragrance. And I don't know if you can see it, but I meant like the last little bit of this one. This one is also in my project use it up because I've just been loving it and pulling for it so much. So that will leave me with one backup of this one. Kind of scary considering how much I love this fragrance. Same with the next one, this Endless Sea. This one is so good. This is like the brightest, most happy fragrance. It is so uplifting and it's so refreshing during summer's heat. This one has fragrance notes of fresh bergamot, saltwater lily, and ocean driftwood. This one has such a fresh aquatic note to it. Oh, it's so good, but it's got something that's kind of poppy and bright in there. It's not exactly what you would expect, especially with the fragrance notes. The bergamot and lily, ooh wee, I don't know. They give just such a fresh, lovely fragrance. And then it rounds out with that wood. And I just really, really enjoy this one. This is another one that I'm kind of at the end of here. And this one is in my Project Use It Up as well because of how much I've just been reaching for it. But again, that will leave me with one backup, which is kind of scary considering how much I like it. This next one is the one I have the most backups of. Oh my goodness, y'all. I have been through a couple bottles of this fragrance though, not gonna lie, so it's not unjustified here. This has become my ultimate skin scent. This is the most lovely, soft and airy fragrance that projects all day. This fragrance has gotten me so many compliments, I literally cannot keep up. This one is amazing. It is Indigo Dreams. I have talked about this one so many times on my channel and not many people do. I feel like this one is really airy, maybe too airy for some people and that is okay. Leave it for me. I will take it all and I will love it. This is like my jam. It is my favorite fragrance mist. It is one that even though I can't smell it myself after a few minutes, Everybody and their mom smells it on me all day long. So for me, it kind of sucks because I can't smell it, but it smells so good and it makes me smell so good. And I just really adore it. Honestly, with those fragrance notes too, I had a feeling I would love it. And when I did find this one last year, I fell in love. This fourth bottle is another one that I only have a little bit left of that this one is also in my project use it up. The next one is actually not Bath and Body Works. This one is a floral flower water. This is a rose flower water. I got these at a really good price and I did have four or five bottles. I am now down to three bottles. It is taking me forever to get through them though. So I will say if you don't absolutely love a fragrance, don't worry about if it's on sale, somebody else will buy them. Rose is not really my jam. I feel like that's a really refreshing spray, but I do not pull for it. And it's been kind of a chore to use them up. This next one I did just get one of these backups for because of how quickly I went through some of this one. Oh my goodness. Like I literally just got this. This came out for Valentine's Day. So I haven't had it very long. And it's not like I picked it up the second it came out. I waited for everybody and their mom to review this one. And then I picked it up and I fell in love and I used a whole ton of it. So I made sure I had backups and I'm contemplating getting a fourth backup. I know it seems silly, but I don't know when this is coming back. And honestly, us Bath and Body Works lovers have been asking Bath and Body Works to give us a cherry fragrance for so long. And not only did they give it to us, 
They gave it to us in the best way possible. This is creamy, it's vanilla-y, it's pistachio-y. So it's definitely in like the trendy um, fragrance notes right now. Pistachio is hot and popping right now. This one has fragrance notes of wild cherry, crust pistachio, and whipped vanilla. It is the most beautiful cherry blend, and I couldn't thank Bath & Body Works enough for finally giving us a cherry fragrance, but not only giving it to us, doing it so well. Now we're gonna talk about all the ones that I would like to have backups of. Starting with some of the Bath & Body Works Aroma Therapy line. First of all, this Midnight Sky Chamomile Patchouli, oh my lord, this is so good. It's like a unisex fragrance. My boyfriend really likes this one too, and it is just so good. It's almost kind of woody, it's deep, it's kind of masculine. I don't know, it has like a spa quality to it. This one has fragrance notes of chamomile and patchouli, and that's really all they're giving me here. These ones don't give like full on fragrance notes, but mm, I would just say this one is like deep and kind of has like a mysterious vibe to it. It's not too strong but it's perfect for anybody. This feels like the perfect neutral scent. It's light, it's herbaceous, it's almost woody, it's so good. The next one is The Sea, Soul Refreshing Sea. This one has like jasmine and eucalyptus type smell, but I don't know, the way that it came together, I don't smell either of those fragrances. It just smells really salty and aquatic and almost a little bit woody again. I don't know. I love this fragrance and it gives me nostalgic vibes and I don't know what it is, but I wish I had gotten a backup of this one. So good. Next up is Pink Chiffon. This is one I never really thought I would fall for. It was a fun, bright, poppy, fresh fragrance that I felt like would be good for summer. But recently I fell in love with this one after it kind of sat on my shelf for a while, honestly. This one has fragrance notes of sparkling red pear, jasmine petals, tiare flower, vanilla orchid, and chiffon musk. Kind of a complex one. Really surprised me with the sparkling pear on the top note. I mean, I guess it's fruity and fresh. Pear is not what I would imagine. Like a fresh, crisp peach almost. I don't know. I love this one though. The blend, again, kind of nostalgic, really sweet, fresh, yummy, I don't know, loving this one, and wishing I had a backup. Another one that I really wish I had a backup of was Together Weather. Everybody raved about it when it came out, and I didn't really get the hype, honestly. I mean, I got it, I liked it, but it wasn't my everything. Like, everybody was really raving about it, and now I feel like I like it way more Ah, oh, then when it came out, this has a lovely airy fragrance to it. I have really fallen for those kind of airy, wispy fragrances, which is honestly kind of weird because I'm one of the people that wants a long, strong, heavy hitting fragrance. And I've been falling for the airy, wispy, skin scent, lighter fragrances. And honestly, I've been surprised at how much they stick to me, like that Indigo Dreams. This one, it's very like girly, but it's warm. It's very inviting and it's hard to describe. And this is another one that's kind of hard to describe, easy to love, but it took me a while to kind of warm up to this one. This one has a fragrance notes of blushing breeze, a sugared cardamom and soft cedar. The soft cedar I think is what really pulled me in on this one. Um, the sugared cardamom and blushing breeze, it is just an airy, light, almost herbaceous, sweet scent. And then you get hit with that woodiness. I really do like this fragrance. I didn't think I did. Again, it took me a minute to let this one grow on me, but I wish I had a backup of this one and I hope they bring it back soon. The only other thing I have of this one is the body scrub, so I'll be able to enjoy it a little longer in other ways. But the mist, I feel like this one is a great one for layering too. And honestly, I have not experimented much with layering my fragrances. I don't know why I haven't thought about it. I just really like them on their own and the blends that they come in. So to mix them, 
that's a new thing and this one I feel like this one would be a blend baby one that would be commonly pulled for for blending fragrances I feel like this one would round out a lot of really sweet fragrances so yeah I will definitely have to look into that but I'm wishing I had another one okay here's one that took me a moment to warm up to fireside flurries I don't know why this has the densest thickest sweet fog oh my god you want to talk about a scent that trails for days this is one of those fragrances for those of us that can't smell a fragrance on ourselves after 10 minutes. I've said this on my channel before, but this is a heavy hitter. Fragrance notes of toasted marshmallow, pink lavender, and cashmere woods. That toasted marshmallow, toasted being the key word, this one has a warmth to it. Deep and fiery. You get that vanilla, but the cashmere woods and lavender come together to give it the thickest, densest, sweet, girly, craveable, yummy fragrance. I just love this so much. And I don't know why I didn't love it at the beginning. I felt like it was better around the house. But now, another one that's grown on me and I wish I had more. This one's like down here. So definitely wishing I had more of this one. So good. Now I've got another trio that I should have gotten more of. We're talking about the Ballet Core Trio. Oh my lord, this one is Ballet Nights. This is another trio that was done so well. Three kind of different fragrant profiles, yet I love them all somehow. Love when this happens. This one is fragrance notes of Wild Plum, Glowing Amber, and Tonka Cream. Oh, that is so good. Another one I have not really gotten to wear enough. The way the plum and the tonka play together is really sweet. And the way the amber comes in, it almost gives it a woody note. Oh, but it has like this freshness, almost a masculinity to it. So it's kind of one of those neutral ground unisex fragrances which I don't think I was expecting from a ballet collection. I think I expected this collection to be really girly, which can be good depending on what the fragrance notes are. But this ended up being a really good unisex fragrance line. I felt like all three of these were so perfectly balanced that literally anybody could wear them and smell heavenly. So this is definitely one I should have grabbed a backup of. I didn't realize how quickly this set would come and go though, so big regrets here because I'm really going to have to savor this one along with the next one, which is Pink Suede. This one I've probably used the most out of this collection. It is so different. This is like a girly take on tobacco, whiskey, and leather kind of smell. You know, like that really rough, rugged, manly smell but done in a girly way. So I feel like this could be worn as a unisex fragrance as well. This one is another one that the cloud and trail on this is borderline obnoxious, which is fine with me. I love those super, super strong fragrances because again, I don't really smell them on myself after like 10 minutes. Even some of the ones some people think are really strong and can be for them. But for me, it takes a heavy, heavy hitter. And this one packs a punch. This one has fragrance notes of blush berries, velvet peonies, and soft cotton. I don't smell any of that. I smell leather, tobacco, like liquor, like I smell strength. It's so hard to describe. But that is a strong fragrance. Like it is not just some blush berries. If it's berries, we're talking berry musk velvet peonies they make this sound so light and dainty if we're talking peonies again peony musk like this smells like depth and soft cotton i don't smell that i smell leather and suede so yeah this one's a really interesting one and of course we're gonna get interrupted by the crickets sorry y'all i'll fix that I didn't think I would have problems with Gooby's food interrupting the video. I mean, it's daytime. 
Crickets are nocturnal. Kind of weird. Sorry about that, y'all. But anyways, this one is the strength. This one is that punch. This one is if you're looking for a strong, leathery, almost tobacco-y type of fragrance, I feel like this is it. And it might just be the way my nose reads it, but I feel like this is that strength profile. The key word for this one here is suede for me. That's what it smells like. It's definitely on that side of the fragrance wheel. Not this light airy thing that they make it out to be. And then this last one from that collection is the Satin Slippers. I kind of forgot what this one smells like. Ooh, okay. This one smells very floral, but airy and well-rounded so that it's not like a hyper floral. Cause for me, a hyper feminine floral, it's not something I wear a lot of. I have a couple fragrances that I like in that wheelhouse, but it's one that I'm very picky about. This is beautiful, gorgeously done. Smells like a top-notch perfume house perfume smells really designer and luxe. This is definitely one of my favorites out of that collection, but they are all so good in their own unique way. The fragrance notes on this are white rose, dreamy jasmine, and airy musk. I feel like they actually really hit the nail on the head with that description. Really smell the rose, but it's not a rosy rose, and it's really rounded out with that other one, the jasmine. Also, not a really strong jasmine smell either. So the way those two kind of blend, it's almost like its own unique, pretty floral compound profile, you know? Like, I don't know. I smell rose, I smell jasmine, but I also don't smell either of them. It's very hard to describe, but very easy to love. This one is a gorgeous floral fragrance for maybe some of us that aren't super floral lovers. Give this one a try, it's so good. Now I've got just a couple more that aren't Bath & Body Works. I've got a couple that are Victoria's Secret Pink. This one is Golden Honey. This one I have not been able to find a backup of that's legit. And what I mean by that is this one, every time I try to buy this online from somebody, eBay, Mercari, they cancel or they tell me it's already been sold or whatever. I cannot get my hands on this for the life of me and I don't know why. It is definitely one of my very favorite fragrances that really sticks to me that I can smell for a long time, which does vary for everybody. But when I find one that sticks and I can smell, I just cherish it. And this one has a very vanilla-y air to it. There are so many vanilla fragrances out there and honestly, Two of the ones I'm about to show you bring me so close to this that I kind of feel like I have backups in a way, but it's not exact. So I'm definitely looking to get my hands on another one of these. I have just a little bit left and I do use it very sparingly because of that. I don't know when this came out. I did not purchase this myself. I purchased this second hand is what I should say. I actually, before I started my channel, I bought about 80 fragrance mists. Um, from somebody off Mercari. They were kind of clearing out their whole collection and I bought them all and this is one of the only ones I have left in my collection. I literally have two left from that whole lot and one of them is because I really don't like it and then one of them is because I love it and cherish it and I can't get another one and that's this one. So yeah, this is definitely so good. This one says it has fragrance notes of honeysuckle, vanilla, amber. I really just smell heavy hitting vanilla. It's kind of cakey and I'm sure I could find a dupe of it. The next two are also from Pink and these two I recently picked up in my little pink haul, which I will leave down in the description for you if you haven't seen it yet. I went to Victoria's Secret Pink for the first time in literally forever and I was really pleasantly surprised. They were having a $6 body care sale and I tried some of the new fragrances one that I've really been enjoying and really want to get more of is this Pink Pop Jelly Vanilla and Dreamy. It comes in this cute like glittery packaging and this one is trying to go for a Y2K vibe. It says Y2K Wow on the back and it says a late 90s mix of Vanilla and Jelly Sparkle, Bubblegum, and Top 40 Tunes. I don't know what Top 40 Tunes smell like but this smells like heaven. And I think they just nailed this one. I want another one. 
I don't really smell bubblegum in this or really any of the other fragrance notes. The fragrance notes on this one are Sweet Pear. You guys, am I just a pear lover and I didn't know it? I'm really surprised that some of my very favorite fragrances that I literally didn't know pear was in, they all have pear in it. What is up with that? So apparently I really like a pear blend as long as it's done well. This one, again, top notes of sweet pear. Then they hit it with the pink jasmine. And then they say bubblegum pop plus essential oils. I don't smell any of those things. I smell pure, heavenly, sweet, creamy vanilla. And this one kind of does remind me of this one, even though they're totally different, supposedly. <laughs> they smell so vanilla -y and creamy and dreamy, and I love them, so I definitely want a backup of this one. Same with this next one. Oh my gosh, this is the Sunset Gelato. Literally everybody in the fragrance world is talking about it because it's super affordable, super yummy, super craveable, really sweet on that pistachio spectrum. And again, pistachio is like a really trendy fragrance right now. And this is just so nice. They did it really well too. It's really creamy and lovely. The fragrance notes are pistachio gelato, caramel drizzle, sea salt, and essential oils. I am in love with this one and I've got to get a backup. This is like my favorite, most pistachio-y pistachio fragrance in my collection right now. And I'm definitely loving it. Super sweet, creamy, and dreamy, just like these other two. Loving pinks, vanilla smells, oh my gosh. And last but not least, I have said I want to back up on this on my channel already, but that was in my Sol de Janeiro haul. I did finally go and grab everything that I've been wanting from them. I will leave that video down below for you if you'd like my take on some of these Sol de Janeiro fragrances. I know everybody and their mom has already done a video on it, but I finally went and grabbed fragrances that I have been eyeballing and I super fell in love with this one. This is the 71. This one has fragrance notes of cozy cashmere, caramelized vanilla, toasted macadamia, and tonka bean. It is so sweet. It has garnered me many compliments already and I definitely am super loving it. I did want the big one, but I'll end up getting it eventually. So yeah, gotta get a backup of this one. So sweet and craveable, one of my new faves. But that has been all of my Fragrance Mist backups. There's definitely a lot here, and there's definitely a few that are on my wish list for the future. I hope to do a full Fragrance Mist collection here on the channel really soon. So if you'd like to see that, definitely make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. We'd love to have you join the family, and I hope to see you in the next one. But until next time, friends, thanks so much for hanging with me.